he sails to the sea in a boat with a broken oar, the tattered sail at half mast, the untinted rudder drifting this way and that. There is no destination, for the sea goes on forever. There is no shore, the ocean has no other side. The current is deep and the water impenetrable, obscuring the mystery of its depths. Underwater rivers like submerged emotions, hiding the end as well as the beginning. He doesn't know how long he has been drifting, perhaps forever, for as long as he has had memory. He doesn't know how long it will continue. The mist and fog obscure the stars and sky. The clouds obscure the moon. There is no way to chart a course, no way to hold direction out of the endless darkness without hope of dawn. He does not feel despair. He does not feel anything. The wind usually becomes, sometimes gathers storms to whip the waves to frenzy, white-capped, cresting, primordial, breaking all about him, threatening to capsize the little boat, breaking it to pieces and strewing its wreckage across the uncharted reefs. And when the storm is exhausted, the sea is calm again. He is left to himself, on the deck, alone, silent for the cries of sea birds. His food is brought to him, spare bounty of the sea, by whales and porpoises, and at other times by mermaids dressed in scales and seaweed. They are his only company other than his dreams. But this is not the only life he had lived. Once before he was a mariner, before he had been born to this life, long before he could even remember, he was a sojourner, riding in a camel caravan, camel caravan of one, crossing the vast desert from sand dune to sand dune, searching the parched oases where he could pitch his camp beneath the arid palm trees. A merchant with his goods he hoped one day to sell, but there was no one there to buy them yet. The sandstorms, crescent moon and stars, the colored silk of his tent, the spices and perfumes of the women who came to see him then, they were actually pigments of his dream imagination. Loneliness and endless desert, the desert with no end. Do you participate in your own dreams? For that would make them more real. Then he remembered he had lived many lives before, living many lives within the one life. Many times before, to a new life, a new set of circumstances, a new identity, so vivid that it wiped out all memories. And in each one he must set about the work of rediscovering his true identity, until at last the memories would return. Difficult to talk about the past, as if it wasn't really real at all, only a, a function of the imagination, sometimes expounded in a dream which upon awakening could not be distinguished from reality. Always the sense of a journey with uncertain beginnings and no ending. Always the loneliness and isolation, longing for permanence in a life without meaning. Once he drove Colorado highways from mountain peak to mountain peak, his entourage with him as a prophet, dealing psychedelic drugs, as a priest spreading enlightenment from high to high, from love affair to love affair, from religion to religion. Once when he was a black magician, he was burned at the stake as a witch. He'd also lived as a musician on a tour of one-night stands and two-week engagements, traveling from town to town, city to city, leaving behind a network of hastily formed relationships, first names and changing faces, having only his instrument and the music to assuage his loneliness, and later the addicted drugs. He had lived as a pauper, a beggar on the streets, a convict and a thief, and also as a holy man, seeking wisdom on the mountaintop and dispensing it to his acolytes. 
He had lived as a rich man and also as a beautiful woman, a priestess, a courtesan, and skilled in the experience and creation of beauty. Of them all, the life of the rich man was by far the loneliest, for no one gave him true friendship, only what they wanted from him. He became a miser, and later he gave freely, but he knew it only after he no longer had the riches could he find true happiness or friendship. His life as a woman was the briefest, for being a woman made him aware of time. For a woman's life is divided into seasons, each of which is fleeting, till she finds herself longing for her youthful beauty, which has gone irretrievably from her. But each lifetime, which seemed forever, would also come to its ending, sometimes through violent means, through crime, sickness, loss, theft, or sometimes just through broken dreams. Time was the one thing he had which would one day run out. As the mariner drifted the trackless ocean currents from treacherous reef to mysterious deep, he could not know how much time he had left or how many times he would be reborn. For life was not like an hourglass which runs out and is tipped up again, but like sand which sips through the fingers very slowly a little bit at a time every day of his life until at last he slipped into a sleep from which he would not awaken. He did not know when that day would be. Until then the mariner sat on the deck of his wooden, his tiny wooden craft with a comical broken oar, tattered sail at half-mast, the rudder drifting aimlessly, no longer flattering himself that he could chart a course. The submerged ocean currents obscured, staring ahead into the mist and fog. The journey has no destination. The ocean has no other side. The sea he sails goes on forever. The sea without a shore.